Good afternoon. I want to thank everybody for coming out on this afternoon. Uh, have present with me uh, County Attorney Patrick Wright. I'm Leonardo Brown, Richland County Administrator, and I have our jail director, Mr. Craymond Harvey. I'm going to have Attorney Wright make some additional uh, opening remarks, uh, followed by him. I'll have a prepared statement, and then we will take some questions. Attorney Wright. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, just to let you know how all this began uh, from Richland County side, this morning we had a meeting uh, with members of the Department of Justice and U.S. Attorney's Office. They contacted me and stated that they wanted to meet with us, well, meet with me, and I included in that meeting Mr. Brown and Mr. Harvey uh, because they did say it was regarding Alvin S. Glenn. So at that meeting, which was 1130 this morning, lasted approximately until 1202 uh, this afternoon, uh, and they stated that they had received uh, public information as well as information from stakeholders that they had concerns about constitutional or potential constitutional violations at the facility. Uh, I did ask some questions uh, about you know why did they choose Alvin S. Glenn to investigate, and that's what they told me about this, the stakeholders. Uh, and the public information. I think there's certain information that have been provided by the media to some attorneys and uh, that unfortunately has been either just completely wrong or incorrect. And I actually told the Department of Justice and the U.S. Attorney's Office that we actually welcome them to come in to have a third party who is not biased, who will actually take a look at the facts and not just present information that will benefit them as attorneys and their law firms in a financial way. So we welcome them to come in. We know the things that the facility has done, the things that administration has done, the things that county council has done. So we welcome them. We just hope that they are fair and unbiased, and we welcome their investigation to show the truth of what has been done at Alvin S. Glenn. We understand that there is another facility in the state of South Carolina that's also being investigated. Uh, we know that nationwide in South Carolina and the nation that there are a number of situations where uh, there are concerns with a, a number of facilities. So it's not a situation where Alvin S. Glenn is in a bubble where there are issues at Alvin S. Glenn. We don't sit here and say that things are perfect, but at the same time, we do believe that the officials of Richland County have done a, an incredible job of trying to in, fix things and help the situation there. And no matter what certain individuals, attorneys specifically, say uh, for their own personal uh, benefits, the truth is there are a lot of things that have been done and we will continue to do and have been done before uh, they filed any lawsuits. And so we welcome the investigation. Uh, we will fully cooperate. I also told them that we would fully cooperate and we have no reason not to because we know what's being done there. And Mr. Brown will get into some more specifics uh, and we'll hope you listen to him and hopefully after this investigation is done, that there will be an unbiased opinion about the facts of what goes on at Elvin S. Glenn and not the biased opinion that has gone out previously. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Wright. We want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the U.S. Department of Justice announcement of the investigation into the conditions at Elvin S. Glenn Detention Center here in Columbia. Richland County's leadership has been proactively working to address the concerns surrounding Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. We recognize the importance of ensuring the safety and well-being of detainees and employees at the facility. We have implemented a comprehensive plan that includes a significant allocation of funding by the Richland County Council. This funding is dedicated to improving the conditions and safety measurements at Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center, including our efforts to increase staffing levels with competitive salaries and significant facility upgrades. The safety and security of all detainees and employees at Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center are of the utmost priority for us. 
We are committed to providing a secure and humane environment for all individuals within our custody. Our commitment to improvement extends beyond this investigation that was announced on today. We are dedicated to ongoing reforms, including policy changes and facility enhancements to ensure that Alvinus Glenn Detention Center operates at the highest standards. Accountability is a fundamental aspect of our efforts. Any wrongdoing will be met with appropriate consequences and we will hold individuals responsible for their actions. We value the input of stakeholders, including families of detainees, the South Carolina Department of Corrections, and the community. We are committed to engaging with them to address concerns and keeping them informed of our progress. Our commitment extends to all individuals within the detention center, regardless of their status. We aim to create a safe, secure, and respectful environment for everyone. In conclusion, we are formally fully committed to the safety, security, and well-being of detainees and employees at Alvinus Glenn Detention Center. We will continue to work diligently to address the concerns and create an environment that reflects our values of transparency, accountability, and respect. At this time, we'll take a few questions. Stuart Andrews, an attorney representing Disability Rights South Carolina, told the Post and Courier that he's been <coughs> discouraged, quote, by the county's failure to respond to requests for systemic change. What is the county's response? Sure. Uh, Attorney Wright is going to uh, speak to that, um, but very briefly, the South Carolina Department of Corrections has oversight of the detention center. And the Department of Corrections has given their input on the efforts made by the county. So I would refer you to their comments related to the efforts made by the county rather than an outside entity that does not have jurisdiction over the facility. Attorney Wright? Yes. And regarding specifically, apparently, what Mr. Andrews said, he is another attorney that has filed a, a lawsuit uh, against the facility. And that statement that you just said, if he said that, that's just not true. There have been a number of things that uh, both county council, administration, uh, leadership at Alvinus Glen have done to improve things there. Uh, it has been acknowledged by the Department of Corrections. It has been acknowledged by the courts in South Carolina. So I understand what he said. Unfortunately, that's not reality. Mr. Ray, you said that there were things that were wrong or incorrect uh, out there about the, uh, about Alvinus Glenn. Is there anything you care to correct the record on or any yeah. specific examples of mistruth that you uh, care to point us to? There have been mis misrepresentations or just outright untrue statements. For example, probably a month ago, I'm assuming, uh, there was allegation, there were allegations and an attorney came and made statements that well, they were going to file a lawsuit because there are some, I don't want to get too specific, but there are allegations that something happened, sexual assault allegations, and there was an investigation done at the time, which happens often, is that you don't hear a lot from us because we can't interfere with an investigation that's ongoing but they can go out and say anything, regardless if it's based on truth or if it's not based in truth, but we have to wait back and wait to get results of investigation. The investigation was closed with no information, credible information that uh, the allegations that the detainee made were true. So that's one example. There are other examples where there are allegations that the attorneys made, but there are no facts to back them up in reality. So there, there are a number of those, and that's just one that I gave you. And unfortunately, because we're a public entity, we can't just come out and just say things. We have to allow law enforcement to do their investigations. We have to allow other entities to investigate before we come out and say things. But they come out right immediately and say things that aren't based in reality. You said there are many changes that have been made. Um, can you be more specific on the, what kind of changes besides staffing? Absolutely. Uh, and I don't want to undersell staffing because staffing is a critical issue facing correctional facilities and detention centers throughout the United States. Uh, Richland County has done multiple things to address both staffing and facility upgrades. One of the things that we've done is Richland County has a detention center ad hoc committee. During the ad hoc committee process and county council, which is open to all members of the public, 
we actually highlighted and showed a walkthrough of the, for example, the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center kitchen. We showed the before and we showed the after. Uh, we also laid out a plan that talked about other facility improvements, including uh, locks. We received questions about that. We outlined a schedule uh, for activity. Those are other examples. Uh, we've also increased everything from uh, ground security. If you were to happen to travel to the facility now, you would notice a significant increase in lighting. Um, again, there are a number of things that uh, if you're looking at the facility, just driving by or visiting the facility on the outside that you can see where there have been changes, and there's some additional internal facilities related to security where we're making changes. So Attorney Wright is correct when he says that to say that the statement that there are no changes to the facility, that is incorrect. And again, I will point out that uh, Alvin S. Glenn is overseen by the Department of Corrections, and they have visited the facility uh, and been able to see some of the things that are going on there. So um, we are excited about the continued improvements. There's more to come. We laid that out in a plan. We're working that plan, and we plan to continue to work that plan. Uh, and we encourage uh, folks who are going along with us to continue to go along with us as we work that plan. What about detainee safety? What changes have you made for them? Yeah, so one of the things we talked about was increasing the overall uh, modernization of our facility. So that includes, you mentioned safety. One of the safest things you can have is the ability to have individuals to be in a space where they're supposed to be, and where they're not supposed to be, they're not in that space. So we talked about the locks. Um, that's one of the big things. One of the other things we, we talked about was having staffing in areas to make sure that people are where they're supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. Uh, we talked about also some internal things that we have done related to our implementation of our policies and making sure our staff know how to properly account for where detainees should and should not be. Uh, one of the things we haven't talked about and it's not often asked is what are the individuals who are in the facility, who are being detained, what steps are they taking to create an environment of safety? And we often overlook that because a lot of the incidences that occur are detainees, unfortunately, who create a scenario where they are creating an unsafe environment for themselves or other individuals. Uh, if you listen to some of the comments related to our law enforcement agencies, there's a lot of unfortunate gang activity in our community. It's unfortunate. But when those members are locked up, uh, waiting their day in, uh, in court, if you will, they're in our facility and their activity does not stop because they are in the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. As a matter of fact, they're in a more confined space, so they're not spread out. So these are concerns that the safety of everyone in that facility is important, the detainees and the workers who have to be in there as well. Thank you for your question. Uh, Mr. Brown, one more question. Um, now, in some of the most recent incidents, there was one incident report from the Sheriff's Department that stated that they were not immediately made aware of an in a violent incident that happened at the jail. Can you address these allegations that um, the jail is not immediately calling on law enforcement when incidents take place at the jail? That's a great question. And I'm going to answer that question, and then I'm going to actually uh, have Director Harvey speak to that a little bit. Um, and I'm going to segue into Director Harvey. Many of you may not be aware that in the state of South Carolina, when the jail is not operated by the sheriff, it is operated by the county administrator. That's part of the minimum jail standards. The, that individual is considered what they call the facility administrator. That facility administrator, which is what I operate as for Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center, then hires a professional who has, by experience and education, the ability to operate the day-to-day -day task of the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. That individual I hired as the facility manager is Director Harvey. In Richland County, there's a lot of separation of duties and oversight as it relates to our organization. For example, today, Attorney Wright is representing Richland County, but he is the legal arm. I don't have oversight of Attorney Wright. He doesn't have oversight of me. So there's an independent arm within Richland County that allows us to make sure we're doing the right things. Additionally, the Sheriff's Department is an independent arm of law enforcement. Richland County Jail does not... Uh, do our own investigations. So we go outside of Richland County Jail to get additional, if you will, third party review of incidences. And so I have Director Harvey talk to you about what that looks like. Uh, but ultimately, that is something that a process that we implement to ensure 
that there is a third party look. Um, and so it's not a negative thing. It's actually something that we do as an internal process to make sure we have someone checking on what we're doing. So attorney, excuse me, attorney, right. Uh, Director Harvey, if you would speak to that just briefly about that process and, and why we choose to do that, I'd appreciate it. Appreciate it, Mr. Brown. Yeah, in, in reference to your question, and Mr. Brown alluded to the point, we do any critical incident, we outsource that critical incident to our sheriff department. This is a common fact in South Carolina when you talk about jails, most majority of the jails are ran by the sheriff department. So even when they have critical incidents, they outsource that incident to SLED. We utilize the sheriff department, Richard County Sheriff Department, like our SLED. They're the ones that investigates our critical incidents. I can't speak on that particular incident without all the facts, the date, the times of what happened in that situation that you alluded to. But I can tell you this, we have had extensive communication with Richard County Sheriff Department on how to streamline our relationship and our communication with them so that they know exactly um, the incidents that we have going on and they can effectively, efficiently um, investigate the critical incidents that we have. Thank you, Director Harvey. Mr. Wright, um, you mentioned welcoming a, an unbiased third-party investigation, as you said. Mm -hmm. I just want to be clear. Do you consider the Department of, Department of Justice investigators to be that unbiased third party, or do you have concerns that a DOJ investigation will be biased? I would hope that they would be unbiased. I think that's their job, to be unbiased. They said to me that they would be unbiased, so I hope that they were honest in you know their statements that they would be unbiased and they said that they were coming in uh, basically based off of the public information that they've read, which I'm assuming would be some of the news articles that's going out, which unfortunately had a lot of incorrect information. Uh, but I would hope that they would get the opportunity to not only see the allegations that uh, have been posed against Alvin S. Glenn by either attorneys or detainees or former detainees, but the actual documentation, the facts that are there to see both sides so that they can get the full picture instead of just that one side where someone's making an allegation but not actually telling you the full story. So I, I would hope that they would be honest in their investigation and do that. And I, and I, don't, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be. Um, I know that the death of one of uh, the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center inmates had brought up the talk about locks, um, bringing a new lock system at the jail. How far have we gotten on implementing that new lock system? Have new locks been installed on all the cells, or is that something that we're still working on? So I appreciate your question, and I notice a lot of questions start from a premise where the activity of something happening negative led to our changes, and that's just not the case. The county was already looking at how we could continue to improve the facility, like we do with all areas of county government. Uh, the fact that we had some unfortunate incidences occur um, did not create the reason for our changes. The answer to your question is related to the locking system. We talked about that project starting in August, and it did start in August. Um, we have uh, 18 uh, units in the facility. We talked about planning on renovating all 18 units, uh, including the locking mechanisms. And that process is underway. Um, and so that process kicked off right after our kitchen project uh, concluded, which we talked about would happen, and we did exactly that. So we really are excited about the improvements that we're making. Uh, they can't happen fast enough for us. Uh, many of you may not uh, have been a part of a previous conversation where I shared, unlike uh, remodeling that you do at your home, the detention center requires a lot more uh, coordination it requires a lot more involvement in terms of how you move people safely about and where you can put them. Uh, and unfortunately for us, um, I know we're past the pandemic, but if you ask individuals around that do facility work in detention centers, the items that we have to have, we have to order several months in advance. Then they take another several months to be received. So a lot of the work that we're doing we're trying to work around those supply chain issues. Uh, and no, those have not cleared up since the pandemic. Uh, and again, these are things that, again, are not unique to Richland County. So you can check it out. You can see whether or not what I'm telling you is true. Um, but it is very difficult uh, in a detention center environment just to make remodeling changes much different than, you know, our individual homes or places where we may reside. So 
just ask people to consider that as we go through these efforts. Um, we want it done already, but it's not a matter of us not doing it. Uh, there are reasons for everything not already being done yesterday. Take a few more questions before we wrap up on this afternoon. What is maximum capacity then? Uh, director, would you like to answer that, please? Sure. And, wh and what is it like on a day-to-day -day basis? What's the average? <laughs> well, the max is 1106. Um, right now, we are at 971. Um, we have had an uptick of new arrestees or new detainees. Um, we're averaging 30 to 40 new arrestees coming in a day. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown, so I want to speak to that. Right. Let, me, let me say a little bit about that as well. And as Mr. Harvey said, there has been an uptick. And, and part of that is, as you may know, that there has been bond reform that has gone in, at the, the state capitol. And since then, there has been a significant uptake of detainees coming into the facility. So, you know, we've made very um, many attempts to try to increase the personnel at the facility, but at the same time, there's been an increase of detainees based on things that are beyond Richland County's control. I'm going to go ahead and take your, your last question, and then we'll uh, let you direct that. Go ahead, sir. George Harvey, I was wondering, uh, how many staff members do you have currently? Go ahead, sir. Currently, we have 121 security staff. Does that include uh, auxiliary staff like Allied Universal, or is that full No, full sir. Detention? This is just Alvin Esklin Detention Center staff. And so then what would you say is the ratio of inmates to staff then? Well, we should be at 250 staff members, security staff. I'll end on that. And one of the things I'll, I'll say as we wrap up with that conversation is the detention center does not have the opportunity to set that standard. We have to accept individuals that are sent to us. So unlike uh, many other agencies where if you have a workload where you reach a capacity and you feel like you're unable to uh, address that sufficiently till you get something other resource, you have the ability to make that decision. We don't have the ability to turn people away. So I think, again, as you think about the detention center, um, think about not only the opportunities that we have for improvement, but the opportunities that the system that the detention center is a part of has for improvement. So thank you very much for coming out this afternoon. Um, you all have a good rest of your day.